Just like the street lights lit this time Like a fire in a blaze, gotta burn it down Can't be afraid to leave this out We got this far, don't know how Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Collegiate R6. On this fine Saturday, we have got some more epic playoff action from the Premier Invite League. First off, starting right now, we have got Akron versus UTSA, the undisputed number one seed across all of the Collegiate Siege ecosystem, Akron, and now the eighth seed. UTSA will be looking to take on the absolute titans of Akron and they'll be hoping for quite an underdog upset victory. We saw some underdog victories yesterday, but can we see them again? As always, my name is Jay Zwills and Vial will once again be joining me on the desk tonight for some more fantastic playoff action. Vial, how are you feeling? I am feeling great, especially with the matchup that we have here tonight between these two teams. That we have, like you said, the undisputed, the juggernaut in Akron. They are looking to reclaim that title of champions once again, as I believe. And correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't believe I am. They took home the fall championship last time. So now they want to go back to back. And what's better than saying we're pretty good? Let's go back to back titles. So they are looking to push their way through. But they have one more hurdle to climb through, and that's going to be UTSA right now. They are going to look for that upset, and I don't believe they've lost a series since basically the last regular season matchup to determine if they could play in to the playoffs. So they look to be a hot hand team. But Jay-Z, how can you go up against a team like Akron and really, really find any confidence if you're going up against such a powerhouse like them? It's hard. It is hard to go up against Akron and have, you know, like you said, confidence, the ability to keep on. And, you know, the mental game has got to be strong as well. It is a tough feat. And teams try to do that very often by pulling out some some crazy strats. You really have to do everything you can on the back end, at least preparing for a match if you're going to take on Akron. And I know UTSA with the homie Migs at the helm of that support staff, he's the coach for this team, and he is no doubt going to have prepared his team for this matchup. And that preparation comes through in the map bands as well. So now we're going to take a look at exactly where these two teams are going to end up doing battle. It's not going to be consulate because that will be Akron's first ban. Coastline going to be taken off the table from UTSA, a very wise choice, as anyone will tell you. Villa will be the first location that we are going to do battle. Akron electing to go to the Italian paradise and Oregon, not a paradise, but an interesting map to see played as well. UTSA electing to go there. Cafe decider to round us out if UTSA can force it all the way there. But Vial, they definitely have their work cut out for them. The work cut out for them, they do have indeed. And if there's one thing that I want to focus on, it's going to be this first map of Villa. Unlike yesterday when we talked about the second map is a tone setter for certain teams, I think this matchup, whoever wins this first map, is probably going to take it in a 2-0 fashion, simply because if you allow a certain team to get that sort of momentum, them being Akron, they are just going to really crush your mental game. However, 
On the flip side, if UTSA is going to be able to find that breathing room and actually take that first map, not only is it the first map, but it's the map pick of Akron. I think they have that confidence to take that second map in a sweep. Granted, I could completely be wrong. We could go to Cafe, and if we go to Cafe, then it's a major toss-up because both teams will be fighting against the grain, essentially, and it's an all-out brawl fest for that map. I think everyone would like to see something of an upset here. I think everyone wants to be like the team to beat Akron or to see somebody show that it is possible to take at least a map off Akron. It has been quite a long time since someone has done that. I believe Texas Tech might have been the last team to do that. It's not easy to do, and we're not going to have to wait much longer to see if UTSA can do exactly that. Let's head into our ban phase for Villa for map number one. And coming out of the gate, we can already see that Akron will be starting on that defensive side. UTSA, of course, starting on the attack. A dangerous position to be in for UTSA. But like you said, Vidal, this is their chance to set the momentum. This is their chance to come out of the gate and throw everything they have at Akron if they can do that. We very well could you see UTSA win this scrap fest all the way down at the end of the day. But Akron, clearly the favorites coming in to this matchup. Thatcher and Ace, the favorites to be banned here as they will not be a factor in map one. And it makes a lot of sense for a map like this. You usually see Thatcher off the board and then paired with a Hard Breacher or another Maverick on the side of the attack. So taking Ace off the board clearly shows that UTSA don't mind taking him off the board and must have read something into Akron, but it still leaves Habana on the board, which is typically a very potent operator for this map. Valk going off the board, however, is going to lead to a lot less of the information game that we tend to talk about for most. And now the final pick will come in with very little deliberation. It's actually going to be Kaid, something that we don't normally see on this map, but it does make a lot of sense. You do get rid of Kaid, and all of a sudden, you have to rely on a mute or a bandit if you want to get rid or hold on to any walls using any denial. So hats off to them to really put a bit of a, you know, meta-defining sort of map already in the works because most teams will leave Kaid on the board because not only do they have it in their own strat book but they know how to deal with it and it leaves a bit of less wiggle, wiggle room excuse me for a team to go through well that room is going to have to be found at every possible opening at every possible juncture in this lineup UTSA is going to have to find a way to capitalize on every small mistake that Akron can make. And, you know, we talk about these two teams and what makes Akron so strong is this powerhouse of a lineup they have put together. I'm not going to run through everyone's stats, but I will, of course, give that mention, that nod to IMAT. He's got a 1.83 player rating, the highest in all of CR6 Premier Invite and in all of CR6 total and ton on the side of UTSA is the only player to even get close to that rating, about a 1.3 rating for a ton. That star player, one of those bigger gunners in Collegiate Siege, widely recognized as one of the best. But for UTSA to come out here, to come out here firing on all cylinders, ton is going to have to be on his game, to say the least. Can't disagree with that at all. We're going to have to see UTSA come out guns a blazing and each one of their players have to come out, show up, ball out as some of us would say if they want to not only pull this map away but the match so consistency is also going to be a key. Now we look towards this immediate attack coming in from UTSA and this is your standard take coming in from northeast side. They want to get rid of or any control in bedroom or anything in trophy and statuary and then just relinquish all their control into 90 landing and so forth onto site once that pressure does come through or at least as it comes through you're going to have a couple of these players to deal with on the extension that first player going to be jetcon he's positioned over here in trophy definitely showing off some of that loose style of defensive control that Akron like to showcase and Jetcon is going to try to vault over into the atrium saving his own life but Rose will make sure that that will not be the case shutting that on down right away 
And something I do have to highlight here from the lineup of UTSA is the presence of BZ and Easy Money both on those flank control operators. You're bringing the air jabs from Nomad and the gridlock tracks that Easy Money is wielding. You've got double the utility to lock off the flank. Definitely, this is something that UTSA are thinking they need to hold off Akron, who seems that they can flank you every time. No matter the site, no matter the amount of flank watch, they are going to be coming up on your flank, as IMAT is already doing once again. And so bringing that double flank watch operator combo could be exactly what UTSA needs to help counter this loose style of play that I, Matt, Jetcon, and the like are often showcasing here in this match. But with a minute to go and now 90 control in their hands, UTSA are looking to crack open this site and get this pressure going. Arv's going to find one back, though, as the man count now relegated to a 4v4. Still 50 seconds left on the clock, and now the gas canisters are going to be burned by Arv. He's going to try and delay as much time as possible, but the only question is where else do this team, or this attack rather, want to get certain areas open? That wall is not going to get open, as it's impact tricked once again. I'm at with a beautiful shot on Tbizi, puts his team in now a very, very comfortable position to possibly take this round away and set the precedent against UTSA. However, they still have to force their way on into sight. They still have to win these gunfights. Now with 15 seconds left, it's up to UTSA. They're going to have to force their way into fatal funnels here, and that's a dangerous part. But no, they actually just over into the 90 hall of tunnel with a beautiful shot. Beautiful double kill. And now the 4v3 is now a 1v3. Make it a 1v2. Now ton down, but not out. And now this diffuser is going to be planted. But Arv has to find the first angle. Finds the first one. But no, easy money will end that round all the way in UTSA, they get their first round on the board here against the Juggernaut. Well, the round has been taken from UTSA and a brilliant start from this roster. Wow, this could be the start of something huge here if Akron are not careful. That was not only an attacking win, they really had a tremendous man advantage going into those closing moments. So excellent work on that attack, specifically on that roam clear and absolutely locking off those flanks. We saw IMAT roaming below, tempting to push up Astro stairs, but when he realized there was a drone, an air jab, and gridlock tracks all over the place, well, that decision was already made for him. He rotated around to main stairs and chose to reposition on the site. But without that loose style of play being allowed for Akron, they may be forced to play a little bit out of their element here. If, if UTSA can continue to do what we just saw in round number one all night long, this could be quite the storybook attempt for UTSA to dethrone these champions. But of course, it's Akron. They will have a response for any round you take off their hands and heading back to the same bomb site to Aviator and Games. They will be looking to do exactly that. We always tend to critique teams when they go back to the same site that they just lost. However, we tend to mention this last night. Now, if a team does elect to go back to a site that they have already tried and lost, there usually means a few things that, of course, that they feel confident enough that they can either win their gunfights, that that's why they lost, or that they can adjust their strategy. And I believe that the only strategy that has been adjusted, and I could be wrong, of course, but I believe it is bringing the Maestro. You have that maestro, and if you put those cams a little bit off of that site into 90 and into study, possibly, or even all the way over on this extension, you have a lot of free information that you can be giving to these loose extended roamers. This time, Jetcon is going to be very wary of holding too aggressively and overstaying his welcome on that top floor, and as such, we'll be repositioning and rotating down these astro stairs the gridlock track is going to come on in jetcon will deal with that accordingly so this flank is still possible but something that would be quite dangerous to execute given that the map control is roughly now firmly in the grasp of utsa you've got your air jabs on flank and you've got bz struggling hugely to take out this mute jammer a couple of missed shots there will continue to make it harder 
for the information game to be flourishing for UTSA, and that is part of their key strategy. Information, methodical, clear, discipline, and that will find them success. They've forced IMAT back to 90. They've forced JetCon off of that extension, but he is, of course, still downstairs. But now with 90 seconds, all that remains in this round, the progress for UTSA is starting to improve, and now they are starting to get this 90 control going. Even with the 90 control that they do have, I do have to wonder, still with a 5v5, plenty of utility on Akron as well, they have to worry about where they're going to push through. This 90, this 90 hall now completely in control of UTSA, not even going to be remotely contested by Akron, but it's these other positions that I worry about, that we see every other person just holding onto these certain angles. We know that Hennessy is going to impact trick any thermite charges that come all the way through. We know that that Maestro is watching that main hall into bar or the planes in game site. So now it's up to the rest of this team. Where are they electing to go? And now we have to watch this impact trick. He gets the first one, of course. And with 30 seconds left, it is getting dire for both teams here. And going to see a little bit of panic come in from UTSA as they have to force this engagement. They have to force their way onto site. But IMAT doesn't know that one is behind. Doesn't matter because JetCon gets fun. 20 seconds still left on the board. IMAT is getting shot from all over the place. Rose now looking for that first fight. 15 seconds left to go. UTSA, they have to force this now. They don't have anything else to do, but they have to force their way onto the site. Arv going to land a beautiful shot onto one. And the bullets kills fly all the way true for Akron as they respond with a flawless round. Well, that was a swift response. Definitely making me eat a large majority of my words. They're hyping UTSA up for round number one. But Akron just played that absolutely perfectly. It turns out that the loose style of Rome, the gunning off-site, Akron do not need to do that. That round was as clean of a defense as you could possibly get. I mean, if you just look at the micro-positioning of each player, they played that so so perfectly i'm at rotating away pre preventing himself from being spotted out as the players pushed up jet con elusive off-site waiting for the opportunity to strike and that was the story of every engagement of every five seconds that utsa were trying to make progress akron were letting them but they were falling back onto site to a place where they were very well prepared to stall off the rest of the time from the clock. A brilliant defensive performance from Akron to swiftly respond to the UTSA round one success. That methodical clear that I talked about, the patience that UTSA had in clearing out those roamers that worked so well in map one turned out to be their downfall in round two simply because they ran out of time. When they got to the bomb site itself, the clear went down. The map control was had, but without the time on the clock, they were forced to just sprint on in. Every kill rained on through, and Akron emerged victorious in every single one of them. Now we swap over to the trophy and statuary site as... Akron is going to set this up in the standard default type of hole that we normally do see. However, the one thing that is not standard for them, at least as of right now, they only have two players on site. They only want to aggress this site, or rather force UTSA into killing as much time as possible. You see Surma, he is going to be holding on into plane, as well as that 90 call, which I believe was going to be held on by Jetcon. So... This is going to be the first point of contention here for UTSA that they have to force their way through. They have to make sure that they clear every angle. They have to get through everybody. But if there's one thing they're probably not expecting, it's the man on a mission. It's the man with the pulse sensor. It's going to be IMAT with the scanner and possibly a nitro cell coming from below. But speaking of the nitro cell, it's actually going to come in the form of bullets from IMAT that takes down Rose. That's an early pick here with two minutes still left to play. Yeah, that early pick is going to silence the Twitch and the F2 player for the remainder of round number three. Surma on this extension is still comfortable to hold this aviator side because nobody has contested that. But BZ is there to cut off the rotation and will silence Jetcon for the remainder of this one. Surma has the answer. A brilliant wall bang onto the head of BZ. A swift response 
for some swift aggression from UTSA. Only three attackers now remain. You've got ample utility to work with, lots of opportunities to gain intel, but not a lot of traction going so far. The C4 underneath the feet of Ton will not find its target fully. 50 damage has been dealt, and I'm at will now be slowly rotating around to 90, knowing the attacker's progress, continuing to just follow in the footsteps of easy money and get all the intel possible. Zyra now rotating around to this master's side, hoping to get a line of sight established on this site. But the progress is lacking for UTSA. Akron are very comfortable to sit on this site and wait for these attackers to push in. If this nade lands, it could be huge. Arv going to escape with a sliver of health, but then going to peek on in and get cut down. So a brilliant nade and a brilliant play from Easy Money. That's a start now, 30 seconds to go, and an execute is all but inevitable. Now, with this last second remaining, I'm not going to look for some shots, but now he is a thorn in the side of this attack. Hennessy finds one, as now the attackers are forced to look behind them every which way. Hennessy, a, a double kill, trying to find the last one. That's Zyra. Surma denies it, and it's all over. Akron will take round three as well. Really just came down to a lot of good gunplay. Now they have the momentum, Jay-Z, as we tend to talk about that some teams lack when it comes to playing against certain teams. And granted, it is a defender side and map. They are on the defensive side, but they are still winning right now. And as they have to look for or they want to look for a flawless site rotation here as they go down to the dining room site, they look to most likely be bringing a more information denial and information or information denial and active utility type meta as you see this is exactly what is going to be brought and the only one person that we have to keep an eye on i think that could be an extremely dangerous player right now is going to be imat who's running around on a vigil but i will take that back because surma on the pulse and we have four c4s on the board well, many would call this the call center from hell, the Nitro Cell Bonanza that will surely be raining up from below. You've got Surma using the pseudo wall hacks of that heartbeat sensor, going to identify the location of all the UTSA attackers who are likely going to be establishing that vertical control. And you mentioned it, Vial, with all of those C4s in pocket. That is simply going to be UTSA attackers blown sky high if they're not careful. And the lack of an IQ is going to make it even harder to prevent these deaths from coming in as swiftly as we expect that they might. However, of course, they may not go for the top-down clear UTSA. That is, they very well could go for a more direct site take. But the problem with any tertiary bomb site, especially one like kitchen and dining is without the vertical control, the defenders can play those angles and they can actually make the vertical control work for them. They'll stop your plant, they'll shut down your entrance into the site, and there is simply nothing you can do. And that's why we're going to see easy money using that Gemini drone properly, sussing out the location of the defenders on this site, trying to determine how much of that vertical extension is there and how long is it going to take UTSA to deal with? Because that time suck is exactly what Akron are looking for. The amount of time they can take holding off this vertical extension could very well be the difference from success and failure. C4 rings out, but only lands a little bit of damage. But Jetcon will actually swing and find one. Ton is down, but not out, so can pick himself back up here. The question is, does he find himself in the crosshair of IMAT, who is going to push up out on this vigil? And yes, he will. All of a sudden, the man disadvantage heavily in favor of Akron, who have now a 5v3 advantage. Rose switches to the pocket sniper of the SMG-11 to maybe find a close gun fight happening on his horizon. And that's exactly what happened. Shuts it down, trying to get the man count back in UTSA's favor. However, I think IMAT knows that he has the diffuser because it looks to be stuck in closet. That could prove to be the biggest factor here for Akron as they just have to force these gunfights and IMAT will find one. Not able to find a second as that C4 will actually find it. Rose trying to go for the wall bang here, left in a 1v4 and now with the ace clutch, but no, IMAT will finish that up as Akron complete the flawless sweep. All well, these last few rounds have really been 
the Akron that we are used to seeing. Steamrolling their opponents into the dirt and absolutely shutting them down at every turn. Of course, this is your defensive side of Villa, so those rounds do often come quite easily, but rounds always come easily for Akron, no matter what side of the coin they are on. And like you said, Vial, clean sweep. One, two, three, all those primary, secondary, tertiary bomb sites over and done with. Now, you can start it over and head back to Aviator and Games for the third time. Of course, that first time saw UTSA's success, the only success they've found so far, largely on the shoulders of some very aggressive play, some very talented roam clear that Akron have simply adapted to beautifully. Every time you see a team make a deliberate change in their play style, you always love to see that, and you always know how indicative that is of a team's skill, of a team's talent, and simply how prepared they are to go into any given map. We know UTSA are prepared here, but the gun skill of Akron right now is outshining them, so attacking this site, things will have to change. They will have to get that attacking aggression back, that confidence restored that they had in round one. Yes, because the confidence in the mental games, as we talk about so much, can prove to be a very big factor, especially when you drag out a matchup in a best of three, or even sometimes a best of one, a certain rounds can just prove to be big factors for the mental game. However, in terms of a mental game, UTSA is going to go down their checklist once again with the exact same type of take that we see them normally take. It's going to be that bedroom take and the same type of aggression coming in from Akron with a little bit more support actually behind them. And IMA is actually going to look to get very aggressive peeking this angle, but Jet Khan and Ton will trade each other out. Now a 4v4 with 2 minutes 20 left to go. They have to work into something, but now it looks like most of this north side of the map has been relinquished to UTSA. It will be a 4v4 situation that both teams are faced with as we just about pass that two-minute mark. You take note of IMAT, who's lurking here, and the question is, did UTSA take note of the very same thing, or is IMAT's position completely unknown? Because if it is, a flank is all but inevitable, and with the only one air jab actually placed down at the moment, there will be very little to stop the mute from being such a problem. That's exactly what will happen, but Zyra will shut down the flank. You just have a man on that flank watch to prevent IMAT from doing anything crazy, and that will be now the man advantage swinging in the favor of UTSA for the first time since round one. Now Zyra contesting on this 90 position. There's nobody there to worry about just yet, but nobody is fully aware of that. Easy money on this red stairs and red landing gonna try to take this control but Akron have now turtled up on this site. Now they are simply waiting for this control to be established. There's still impact tricking to be done in vault. There is still things to be opened and revealed for UTSA and Akron are gonna be looking to shut that down at every turn. The impact trick goes in and inadvertently takes out his own Mew Jammer. However, Zyra does have more pellets to use and will eventually get at least part of that wall open. Now, at least to cut off any rotates. But the question is, with 40 seconds left to go, where is UTSA going to force these gunfights and these engagements? Arv wants to get very aggressive here, but elects to fall back to his deployable shield. Maybe take that very soft angle by the couch. But where is this attack coming in? It doesn't look like they have really a set place on going into right now. But Rose wants to maybe take an early engagement, or rather late engagement, into that vault. The wall bubs will give the position away of Zyra, so... Zerma will know exactly who is coming his way. 10 seconds left to go. It will be a slaughter fest. Zerma gets one, finds a second onto the head. Hennessy will also find another. Rose will fall to Arv, and Akron will... Yeah, Akron absolutely running away with that round in the closing seconds. It seemed that it all came down to the wire and all just really ran out for UTSA there. Unfortunately, Vial exploded in the middle of that sentence, and so he'll be back and joining us in the booth. But but oh my, what a performance there for UTSA, or for Akron rather. UTSA tried their best to get that 20-second execute going. They tried 
to send it in. But once again, the time was not there. And Akron, they were ready. They were ready for the execute. Their guns were up. Their sights were true. And they delivered every UTSA player to the grave just one at a time. And they will methodically take round number five. And now they will go ahead in that four to one lead. Only one more round before the sides switch. It really looked like UTSA didn't know where they wanted to go in from. And not only that, they didn't have exact information on where the Akron defense was set up. So that really led to their downfall there, especially when you just have fatal funnels, as we like to call them, that you're just going to go all the way through. And of course, all you have to do is press mouse one and land a few bullets onto some heads. And that's all Akron needed to do. However, we go back up to this trophy statuary and we have an interesting pick, Jay-Z. We have IMAT on the cap can. What do you take of this? The cap can is always an interesting play to bring out the one advantage it gives you is that eventually you hope that in those late gunfights that UTSA would have less health to work with because maybe a shot or two or a cap can trap or two could deliver them to an early or at least just some early damage dealt once they are aware of the cap can being in play they're gonna likely check every door but at the same token if you put those cap can traps on that doors towards the site and you really wait for the last possible doorway to get those down then when the execute comes in in those closing seconds everything is going to be a lot easier for akron something that they obviously haven't struggled with have been those 20 second executes but i'm at always looking to stay ahead of the game and bring out those off meta operators that could give him an edge at any turn but ton gonna take the edge in round number six by taking the head of surma that's gonna force jetcon to make a discreet retreat back over to the site i'm at the run out god the game sense on this man is absolutely insane zyra will be no more brings that man count back to even as we near the 92nd mark and this defense is going to have to be really cautious of where this attack is peaking. Rose here on this Twitch drone, an operator that we don't see very often, if at all, on a attacker's side, might not have spotted Arv. Arv is in a very dangerous position, especially with the shotgun, can pull this round very much in their favor if they aren't careful. Gonna get flash banked Kingdom Come, but finds one onto the head of Rose. That's the shotgun full, fully incapable of them, but Ton will find one back, and Hennessy finds one as well. We find ourselves at 60 seconds of the 3v2 man advantage for Akron. Now in this closing minute, it's gonna have to be an incredible push from Ton, but the impact grenades are gonna fly on into Ton's face and take him down to about 20 HP remaining. Hennessy on the swing will finish off the Zofia. BZ is all that remains, desperately searching for one. He'll find Hennessy, but he can't take down the remaining Akron defenders. Jetcon will make that so and will give Akron that five to one split that they were searching for going far ahead quite a dominant performance from them so far on villa this is the akron that we know very much so of we know that they are going to be dominant we know that they have their playbook set in stone now the only question is will the roadrunners elect to come back and do they have it in them do they have the ability to switch off this notion that hey this is a very dominant team yes but we can play just as dominant if we get our chances right and if we play this correctly so as we swap halves at the 5-1 split, we see the defensive half going for, of course, Akron and UTSA. Now they get the chance to maybe put up a 5-1 and take us into OT. Jay-Z, we're going to start off at planes and games. What do you think the Roadrunners need to do? Because that first half clearly was not in their favor. Well, you know, now on their attacking or the defensive half, rather, you can't really easily talk about simple adaptations they can make because now we're going to approach their style of play from the complete other side of the coin, of course. However, you know, in the overall play style, we're seeing neither teams actually be overly aggressive or overly, you know, swinging on each other. Often that is what we'll see from Akron, but Akron are playing a little bit restrained here, and that's something that I love to see from them. It's showing that they really are the jack of all trades in terms of a five-stack collegiate roster. They simply 
can do anything you throw at them. The methodical approach UTSA took to their attacks, I really liked it. I really think that it had potential, and when it came down to it, at least in round number one, they proved that it can have success. But on this defensive half, they are going to need to be as methodical as ever, but even more so, they are going to have to be aggressive, as I would dare say. I mean, aggression generally is considered, is generally frowned upon because it can often, those monkey plays can often get you killed. But to put Akron on the back foot, something that would be nearly impossible to do, you need to make them down a man advantage very early on. The play from BZ dropping down Arv, a good shot there with the SMG-11, will start that process. Now Akron have to fight back from a deficit, but with IMAT finding that kill, and now with these rest of these UTSA defenders forced to get the heck out of Dodge, that aggression, that early style, may not have worked out after all. However, you've lost Arv. You've lost a hard breacher. That single pick could be enough for UTSA to take this round because now you know that every hard wall on site is going to remain so. So you just have to play off those doorways, play those fatal funnels, and there you go. You have a round in your arms. This round as well, not in the arms of either team. However, we could favor the defense just because of the time. At just about 90 seconds, still a lot to be done here in terms of drone work, in terms of control setting for this attack of Akron. However, they have to also be worried about any flankers. Easy money down all the way in the basement can go for a very late flick and catch them extremely off guard. Even if he doesn't succeed with a kill or two, he will distract them and kill even more time off the clock. Hennessy going to launch a nade through to try to get rid of that mute jammer. Nade a little bit of damage onto Ton, but nothing too significant, at least as of yet. 60 seconds still left on the clock, and this attack is slowly stalling out. Without the hard breach, the next mission of Akron is simply going to have to be to find some picks. And if UTSA know what's good for them, the aggression will be very minimal. Zyra, however, is going to keep on the aggression, advancing on the door. But the flank from one is going to net the kill. In fact, it will be a team kill. I'm at taking on Surma. Rose will net the kill with a smoke. Zyra gets one, and it's all up to Hennessy all of a sudden. The loss of the hard breach seemed to be enough for UTSA to take this round, and now the 81 bullets will pour their way towards this aviator door. Hennessy, a nearly impossible 1v4 clutch. Here comes Tun, and the headshot is delivered. The maestro does the work for UTSA. Round number 7 will go in the hands of the Roadrunners. This is exactly what they have to do. Early aggression, impact frags, that's how they bring this back. And we're going to swap over now to the trophy and statuary where we can most likely see that exact same type of game plan come out. And this is where maybe we see the momentum shift for the Roadrunners. Maybe we see them start getting that confidence, start wanting to take these gunfights and winning them even, I would say. We could absolutely see this go in favor, at least for maybe a more defensive-sided Villa, which, of course, Villa is a very defender-sided map. However... We know Akron, and we know that they still have plenty of room to work with. And no matter the deficit that a team is clawing back that they have, they still have the very pocketed strats that they can come in and just really dominate a team. Yeah, the domination is hard to find against Akron. Of course it is. We've talked about it before. And, well, UTSA, they certainly continue to have their work cut out for them here. Round number eight is gonna have to go very similar to round number seven. Otherwise, Akron would be staring down match point and UTSA would be staring down on map 1L. Something that they, of course, are not looking to obtain. Now, Akron, they struggled losing Arv early simply because Arv was that first player devoted to the swing on the Rome clear. That is an uncharacteristic Akron mistake, but one that UTSA did brilliantly to punish. We talked about this at the start of this matchup that UTSA need to punish every little thing that Akron do wrong. Having your hard breacher go for your Rome clear? Well, that is something done wrong. UTSA punished it, and they took the round as a result. Well done to them. 
but that's not enough that is only one defensive round and these rounds of course do not come easily when i matt is on the hunt for some more kills hennessy droning him in jet con on 90 window looking to fully establish this control of the south side bz has since been forced away to rotate below and will be repositioning for later with south control now established all that is left is to actually shift the focus onto the site itself. You'll have a player rotate over to Master, have players push up 90 to landing and to the statuary door, and all of a sudden, you can push on in and get that execute going. But there will, of course, be these defenders standing in their way, waiting to stall this one out. But Akron are on the move. On the move indeed, and this time is in the favor of the, the attackers right now. With a minute 45, they have control of 90. They already are swapping over to this master bedroom take, so they can have a split control and can establish a crossfire. Ton, however, wants to eliminate that playing in the bathroom, maybe find a free frag from maybe an attacker getting overly aggressive or swinging in the corner that they have not checked. However, Jetcon's going to drone out everything possible and hopefully find Ton. However, he doesn't drone out the entirety of the bathroom and doesn't spot ton that can prove to be extremely dangerous here especially if he just holds a very tight angle onto this bathroom no one has joined him out yet here with 60 seconds left to go it's going to prove to be extremely dangerous however henny's gonna hennessy is gonna be just as dangerous finding the first frag onto zyra yeah, with that pick on the board, now the Execute is going to roll on through. IMAT's making that easier by taking down BZ. Ton is hopefully going to find an answer here for UTSA, but Jetcon says no. Easy money in Rose. All that remains, the plant now going down by Surma. A response is needed here. Rose is out of those toxic babes and is out of this round. IMAT finds a double kill. Easy money in a 1v5 in a post plant. A nearly impossible clutch situation, but easy money could do it. Adding to that three kill tally, here comes a C4. It's going to rain on through but Jetcon will not find it, and Arv will indeed. There goes the round for Akron. Now they will be staring down match point. They have match point, and they have a very dominant round to feed off of as well. UTSA, they have to force something. They have to find something in them to go all the way back. They have to get three, or rather four rounds all the way in a row if they want to even force OT and think about winning this matchup but however they have to take it one round at a time and I think that's one thing that a lot of teams don't tend to do and maybe that's what UTSA has to actually focus on is look at the next round look at what you need to adjust for a certain map for a certain site and then just fully embrace that and for that round and don't worry about the overall overall scoreline your bombs from being defused by attackers yeah, you got to worry about those round economics at some point. But of course, like you said, Vial, one round at a time. That is the mentality to go into a deficit like this. That four round deficit that UTSA now need to take flawlessly. But against Akron, I, it's so hard not to count UTSA out of at least this first map because it is nearly impossible just to get one round off akron utsa have done well and found two but finding four in a row when it shows no signs of the case being at hand it is going to be hard for utsa to say the least of course they're on defense they can play patient they can play time but Akron methodically will take map control, they will take site control, and they will force even the most patient players on UTSA to reposition, get out of position, and they will take them out. The early aggression and at a big early impact frag so far has been the only way that UTSA have found a defensive round win. Of course, it's a high risk play, but against Akron sometimes you just have to go for the high risk, high reward plays because you have to play all out absolute ham as much as you can. There's one thing I want to be critical of as well, at least for UTSA. It sometimes doesn't look like they're playing as a team. They're not really giving each other that much active information. They're trying to, but it looks like the Akron is just shutting them down no matter what. When they were on the attack, Akron was just able to shut everything down. And speaking of shutting them down, it's going to be this roam game. I'm at actively following this drone and wanting to find 
Beezy, this pulse is going to go all the way back up the stairs, but Hat knows that there's a hunter coming for him, not going to be able to pull the trigger fast enough as I'm at now land his 11th kill in this map. Kill number 11, going 11 and 3 right now, incredible stuff, but it is what you have come to expect from a player like I'm at putting up numbers like that every time. Ton, of course, at the helm of the frags of UTSA, but it hasn't been enough. And with I'm at finding a double kill, taking down easy money on that vertical extension, things are crumbling and they are crumbling quickly for UTSA. Rose is holed up in the bathroom, wary of the vertical pressure that could come from IMAT from below. Arv now will be pressuring on that bathroom, having opened up that closet wall. And Surma and Jet Khan, part of this five-man stack, are pushing on in from Statuary. Now, Site Control firmly in their grasp. Arv finds another kill on Chaton. It is Zyra and Rose, all that remains of this defensive presence. Rose tries for it, but Arv denies it. Zyra is the last man standing in a 1v5, and Surma will quickly shut that down. A flawless round number nine and a 7-2 map one victory for Akron back-to-back -back flawless rounds to take the map seven to two here is going to be Akron and a very dominant performance here granted we did see, we did see some good things coming in from UTSA but it looks like Akron just has their number they know exactly what they want to do and how to counter everything going into this matchup so really good map one coming in from Akron and now the only question is how does UTSA respond as we head over to their map pick, which is going to be Oregon, which will be coming very shortly. But Jay-Z, if you're Akron, you have to be feeling very good, especially after two back-to-back -back flawless rounds, wouldn't you say? Absolutely. You've got to be feeling good. You've got to be feeling ready to pretty much do anything, which includes going ahead to UTSA's map pick in just a few minutes. But we are going to take a quick breather, get a sip of water, stretch it out, come back and watch Akron try to finish this one out against UTSA. The underdog story is going to have to begin very soon because UTSA are now fighting for their premier invite playoff live. Stick around and we will be right back.
Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back here to Collegian R6 as we have a very good matchup and it looks to be a very dominant one, at least for Akron. Going up against UTSA as they took the first map 7-2 to two in a very dominant fashion, especially ending two rounds back-to-back -back flawlessly. I'm your caster, VL, alongside Jay's Wills. Now tell me, Jay-Z, we're heading into Oregon. What can we expect from both of these teams? Well, we know that UTSA is going to have to come out firing on all cylinders, but we know Akron is already firing on all cylinders. They proved it on their own map pick, but I am not going to fully count UTSA out of this. Of course, map one didn't look too good for them, but it was, of course, Akron's pick. They're comfortable on that map, and maybe, just maybe, they're not as comfortable on Oregon. I think this was the map that Texas Tech took off of Akron some time ago. Now, this is a good while ago, mind you, but Akron doesn't lose maps very often. So when they do, it's worth noting, circling, highlighting, and coming back to that a bit later. But for now, it is all about UTSA and the response that they can have against Akron. I know they have what it takes. Homie Miggs at the helm. This is a very competent leader of this team, and he is going to be having to lead this team through a underdog story and an extreme one at that. Two maps are needed for UTSA to survive. Just one is what their focus will be on now. They are going to have to pull out all the stops on Oregon, and with Akron starting on defense that runs the risk of Akron getting ahead with another dominant lead and UTSA struggling to bridge that gap. And it starts here at the ban phase as we like to talk about because this is where certain teams will pick apart others strategies if they've done their review. However, the reviews will come in and it'll be the exact same type of operator ban as or rather attacker operator ban that we saw from the last map. Thatcher and Ace will be off the board, both very meta defining in their own right, especially Ace. But there are still plenty of hard breach operators still on the board, especially for a map like Oregon. We still have Habana and Thermite on the board and Valk will also be off the board. Jay-Z, could we see a repeat of the operator bans? We may as well, but of course that's going to come down to this final one. Thatcher and Ace will be gone, as will the information queen of Valkyrie. But rounding it out will be, it seems to be that Mira, which is no surprise. You're not going to have those black mirrors be any factor in any of these bomb sites, because on Oregon especially, that basement bomb site can be dominated by some mirror windows. It changes how you have to attack. So both of these teams on their attacking halves will not have to go through that extra step in their checklist per se, having to deal with those mirrors and those extreme power positions that can be established by these defensive teams. But you talk about power positions, you talk about Akron, who is starting on this defense. They are the ones to set the pace and the rhythm in this matchup starting on kids and dorms as their first bomb site of choice about other operators that have not been banned i guess you can say we do have to bring up operators like wamai well, or even clash two operators that do make their namesake on this map and can hold on to various locales just like the attic as we're probably going to see at least one operator hold on to because that can be a very very good and big power position for any team if you can hold on to attic and you know how to hold on to attic you can stall a attack for a very long time however we're not going to see well vial i think we may have lost you to the shadow realm again the internet has exploded but in round number one now, as we are just about to get underway, it's going to be all about UTSA and how fast and decisive they can take map control. Of course, on this top floor bomb site, it is all about the game's crossfire. You push up in attic, you take attic control. You push up in master, you open up closet, you take control from there. 
and UTSA will do so with Rose, the Maverick, and with BZ, the Habana, as those hard breach operators. Generally, you will see your Maverick go on that tower side, as we are seeing here right now, and you'll see your Habana or your other hard breach operator. In this case, it is, of course, the X Kairos pellets that are in play. You'll see that operator go over to that master bedroom side. Ton will open up this from below to ideally remove the Electro Cloth from play, but that is, of course, gonna be easier said than done arf a brilliant fadeaway shot onto the head of bz and you've lost your hard breach for this closet side that is a terrifying loss for utsa it is gonna have to be an absolute frag fest to get this traction back in round number one they do still have the opportunity to open up these walls at least in a semi good fashion with the maverick you can Maverick Trick. However, I don't think any team is going to elect to Maverick Trick it right now, especially with the time dwindling away. As we reach 92nd mark, Easy Money is going to be watching for any flank as there are two roamers at this middle floor site. But Ton is going to get overly or overly careful by looking downstairs in laundry to check below for them a minute 20 still left on the clock for them to go but jetcon might have to take this fight on ton very very soon yeah with this fight now the next thing in the checklist for this utsa attack oh no ton uncharacteristic of ton there missing a mag and jetcon finding the flick and the kill another huge pick for Akron and a detrimental loss to say the least for UTSA now with under a minute to go easy money is wary of IMAT here on the flank and finally IMAT will be taken on down easy money delivering that kill but with four more to find of a double C4 and that is going to be enough to shut down UTSA for the remainder of this round the case is out of pocket easy money is out of the site and Akron Seems to be completely out of control right now, Biel. You mean to say UTSA, but I do agree with you. They are completely out of control. And that momentum that Akron had that last map seems to be continuing over as Arv will net himself the quad kill to start this round. And what a tempo setter, setter coming in from the mute. Yeah, now with the tempo set, now Akron will be looking forth to further rounds and further rounds under their belt to take on forward. With the top floor site now under their firm control, it is now the basement site of laundry and supply room, the deployable shield central that will be coming in play. Hennessy will be bringing the Goya once again, bringing out those Vulcan shields. And we take a look at our scoreboard here and you gotta look at Arv delivering two C4 kills and two kills simply by the gun skill i'm thinking back to a moment a couple of seasons ago or a season ago where arv lined up a triple c4 shutting down attackers left and right this man really knows how to literally ring him up that's one thing that we're probably going to see him continue to do it's going to be his beautiful smg 11 place that we see him in the last map and most likely in this one as well as we head down here to this basement site here we have to start talking about this mental game past these two maps akron shot utsa in that last map very decisively and it looks like the momentum is still in their favor utsa they have to find a way back into this and jay-z what Granted, it's a new map. Granted, it's a whole new deck of playing cards. But what do you think that UTSA have to start working on if they want to pull this back, at least in their favor, in terms of maps? I mean, we're going to have to see. It feels like a miracle, BL. We're going to have to see because Akron seem to be... Oh, my goodness. Akron are absolutely unstoppable. There goes Rose, and there goes the Maverick. A crucial... And I mean a crucial operator to be attacking this bottom floor site, especially because Surma is rocking those Electro Claws, is rocking that hard breach denial that now BZ will almost have no chance at removing from those hatches and have no chance at removing to get the pressure on that basement bomb site. You've got this extended roam presence. IMAT refuses to be felled. 
one of the more persistent roaming presence in this round. BZ is now really just going for the Hail Mary play. A solo entrance over here on this side, finally being supported by Tun and Zyra working their way in from this side. Their mission, should they choose to accept it, is remove IMAT from this kitchen. But that is easier said than done. Some would call it an impossible mission, as IMAT is simply waiting patiently to click on heads as is Jetcon, here to support the Malusi, his teammate just gonna lock down this side of the map and be an impossible roam presence to deal with. The time is ticking away. Akron are stalling out the clock and UTSA are unfortunately not been able to get much traction onto this site. Ebox Hatch, however, has been opened up wide and the presence on Laundry Stairs is mounting. That's Zyra and Easy Money. Their job is to next pressure on this site but the crossfire is going to struggle to be established, especially if there are players coming up from behind. Ton will silence IMAT, so it will make that process a little bit easier and revive BZ to have that full four-man stack going into this four-man defense. With 60 seconds just about left to play, they do have control of the laundry storage area. And that's going to prove to be very, very important for them if they can force their way and win some gunfights. Tennessee, however, is going to be in a very dangerous position, as well as Jetcon. Jetcon can go for a very late flank here onto BZ and Ton and render this entire attack done with shut down and useless but easy money going in for the immediate fight hennessy has the c4 ripped in hand maybe is he gonna find one no it gets shot mid-air now he has to resort to his gunplay maybe does he find one here on the close angle but no trades will ring out jetcon does go for that flank it finds two zyra and easy money now left in a 2v3 scenario plenty of players will swarm then now a 1v3 here make it a 2v1 1v1 zyra has to get this diffuser down going for this plant now jetcon the man on the flank now the man on a mission two seconds left they have to stick this plant now and zyra all the way in the open didn't see him however and akron will take that round 2-0 right now and beautiful gunplay coming in from both sides, I will say. Yeah, both sides really made it come down to the wire despite the loss of the Maverick very early on. UTSA, for the most part, made me eat my words there, really clawed it back, and really it seemed like they had a chance in that closing moment. But JetCon, the flank, was that key moment that shifted the tides of that UTSA attack. Zyra nearly clawed it back, but the issue was we were addressing it during the round, how the Rome had not been dealt with. Even though, even when IMAT pushed up and aggressed on those meeting hall attackers, Jetcon remained stalwart. He remained a persistent presence on that Rome and refused to be found. Eventually, the flank was too much for UTSA. Two rounds now will be in possession of these Akron Zips. And now, in round number three, the tertiary bomb site of kitchen and dining will now come to play. This could be another flawless sweep come in in terms of site rotations that Akron will be able to, or at least have on the cards to do, as they would have to win this one. And maybe we see them go for a double flawless. It's a little too early to call that out just yet because this site, as we well know, is ten or at least rather prone for attackers pulling this off. And the only thing I have to question is going to be I'm at on this frost. I don't know how I really like this pick, especially since most teams will be droning this out. But maybe I'm at gets lucky and finds one at those windows. Yeah, the pick from last time really stalled out the UTSA attack before it even got started, but I'm at not going to tempt fate a second time, at least on that frost pick, using those bear traps to really make UTSA feel the sting of every attacking round that they cannot seem to get under control, and BZ now will be looking to pressure on this roam clear along with almost every single member, of UTSA here. They're going to go for this top-down presence, establish the vertical control, which is essential to any tertiary bombsite attack. Jetcon is going to be that defender to deal with first. The Jaeger wielding the 416 I'm at on the tower stairs and an attic to be that force as well. Jetcon refuses to be felled, but a pressure from the other side. No, it's just BZ, who's simply better in that gunfight, winning the one-on-one -on -one and winning 
control of at least the majority of the top floor. Hennessy, the top of White Stairs, he could fall back or find a pick before that, but Rose will not fully be cut down. Only a little damage being dealt there. But BZ from the other side of Attic, I'm at the long shot is going to send the Nomad to the grave. An unbelievable play there from Imat, even on the Frost, making his presence felt. That's gonna be a nade tossed on through and a nade wasted and down for the count. Imat, the spray through the wall, finds Rose and he will finish off the kill right away. Easy money, gonna get revived, but now in a 3v4 situation and Imat lurking on the tower side, things are once again looking tough for UTSA. Well, Zyra will net another kill. I'm Matt. Gone and out of this fight. So UTSA are in fact closer than ever to taking their first round here in round number three. You see Surma. He's rocking the 81 bullet Alda waiting in the corridor for this push to come through. Tun, Zyra, Easy Money are still working that vertical pressure, hoping that Akron provide them a free opportunity for a kill or two but they, those picks, those opportunities are not being found just yet. Akron have now retreated to their very passive style of play. They are waiting in this bomb site for this push. Surma on the swing nearly finds two, but in fact will find none as Zyra will escape. Very nasty and grisly end. Easy Money joining the Thermite on this push. There goes the deployable shield, and here comes the push. But Surma denies one. That's ton to fall. He'll deny the second. Hennessy denies the third. Goodbye, Easy Money. Goodbye, UTSA, for the third round in a row. Akron, a clean 1-2-3 sweep. Flawless site rotations we have coming in from Akron and this momentum, this dominant team that we know that we see so very often is being is putting themselves on display, letting them know that, hey, we know you're a hot team right now, but we are always hot. And that is just being proven right now. 3-0 as we head back upstairs. And it just looks so, so dangerous here for UTSA. They have to fight. They have to find something here if they want to remain in this game and find a competitive Jay-Z. Yeah, they really do. The footing needs to be found here for UTSA. We've seen moments of glory, moments of promise that have looked like maybe it could shine on through and maybe... UTSA would take a round here or there, but Akron have proved just a bit too difficult in this map so far. We saw in that previous round, we're going to talk specifically about the attacking approach and the fact that there wasn't much of one. It was simply established vertical control, and then all they had left to do, lacking utility and manpower, was send it down white stairs one at a time. I mean, that is not an effective long-term macro strategy that is going to find you success on against most teams, but specifically against a team like Akron, who will gun you down through those fatal funnels if you will walk right on through them. That's what UTSA did in round three. That's kind of what they did in round two. So in round number four and going forward to this second three rounds of this first split, UTSA are going to have to play this perfectly. And so far, we have yet to see them have much of a chance to showcase macro strategy at work. We haven't seen their strat book fully unfold simply because they have been cut off and denied. They have been losing utility, manpower, necessary parts of their pushes very early on in every round. Speaking of things that they know, it's going to be IMAT. They know exactly where he is. Maybe this is the start of them trying to root out these flankers, and these roamers, and the aggressive players of Akron. 3-0 on the table. UTSA is still technically in this game. Three rounds isn't nothing to scoff at if you're this team that's up, but it certainly isn't something to shake off if you're this team. Def or if you're this attack rather you can easily come back from this and you can find your way in it especially since you still have your defensive split on the horizon however ton looks to get jetcon once more at the top of these freezer stairs the question is does he actually win this gunfight once again but off screen rose is gonna find one that's hennessy off the board and once 
now Tun will win this gunfight. Loses it once, but wins it all the way back. And Zyra will find one as well. Now a 2v5 here for Akron. Maybe we start seeing UTSA with this momentum shift. Well, the momentum indeed is far away from Akron in round number four. UTSA, a clean roam clear. They simply assassinated every single possible roamer, except for I'm at, of course, and even those on-site players. The air jab will now alert Rose to the position of a flanker, and I'm at will be forced to retreat. Surma right now is locking down site all on his own and finding two kills because of it. More kills are going to be presented with themselves, though, as all the swings are coming on through. Imat comes up to support. Surma finds a triple kill, and all of a sudden, UTSA are lost, and BZ is alone. What a comeback, and what a sight. Hold from Surma, holding down the site all on his own in a 1v5 situation, but now it's a 1v2. It's now UTSA on the back foot. BZ hoping to bring this one back. There goes I'm at the headshot is delivered and now it's a 1v1. BZ has two drones in play and time to work with but opting for the swing and Surma opts for the 4k. Akron will take round number four. That round looked done and dusted for the Roadrunners, but instead Akron comes in and will take it for them. Instead, Surma, like you said, the 4K and a beautiful hold coming in. They just played that 2AT and Surma just really putting, showing that his gun skills are up to par. And now four rounds in a row. When we thought that the Roadrunners were going to be able to find something, they got shut down and now it's looking close to desperate for them yeah with this desperation mounting on their attacking half you know utsa are very disappointed in the way that last round shook out i mean they had everything going for them there they had three akron defenders cut down instantaneously not off spawn but close to it they removed 90% or a majority of that defensive presence. I'm not a mathematician for a reason, but without that defensive presence in play, it was literally all up to Surma. Imat was off-site, his flank was known, so we had to spend the time to rotate all the way around to the site. Surma found three kills before Imat arrived. Three kills that won the round for Akron straight up, without a doubt. Surma pulled that round out out of nowhere for Akron, a round they should have certainly lost. But Surma just proved that there is no single player of this Akron roster that is less important than another. They are all absolute critical pieces of this defense and of this attack for Akron that simply when any one of them is in play, the clutch factor is absolutely on point. They're all able to clutch it up in those closing moments. They can all frag out even on those supporting roles. So in round number five, we're seeing Imat really feeling good after that clutch. Now he's trying to respond in kind to UTSA, trying to answer back to those early picks that were delivered on this defense last time, but nothing is going to be found, not even a little bit of damage for either of these teams. And a beautiful pick coming in from Surma, but it'll be immediately answered back by Easy Money. Now a 4v4 with two minutes still left to go. And this J Bunker in blue is now established for UTSA. This could prove to be very advantageous for them, but they still have to clear out Pillar. And that's Surma, who could find another pick hot off that last few gunfights. But might have to find another coming very soon with two minutes still left to play this attack is looking very promising actually they have control they flushed out the, pl the pillar player and they have control of the bunker so this is looking very promising but the only fortunately vl you were once again banished out of existence and with this take coming on through I will happily walk us through this closing moment. Now with one minute, Question 20 is, seconds remaining, is Surma going to swing around, trying to take this fight on, but no kills are found. What is Surma doing? Hello, Tun will punish Surma for that absolute tomfoolery. And now UTSA are looking forth to this potential closing attack. They just got a pinch on this site, but they have to deal with an IMAT lurking all the way in laundry and watching this long haul fast. Here comes Jetcon, though, also on the response from Freezer, but his position is known as well. Now the wall will be opened by that exothermic charge, and now all of these lines of sights and crossfires have been established. Easy money 
Swinging on through, looking to find some picks here, but Akron are playing this patient. They are waiting for UTSA to execute, and UTSA are lacking smokes. They are lacking coverage on this plant. It's going to have to be some frags or for somehow some sort of miracle plant on the ground. Here come the flashes. Hennessy's going to be forced to turn around. Ton is going to push on through, stunning his way in as well. But these attackers need to move on into the site. Jetcon will find both of them. As they do that, they waited too long for this execute. Jetcon is here to stay at this freezer doorway. Here comes Tun and BZ, the last things that remain, but it is nearly hopeless. Tun is cut down, I'm at on the swing, and Hennessy will join him. Akron, round number five. Five in a row under their belts. They could lock this down as a double flawless sweep here for not only this not only for this half, but just in general, that would be insane to see Akron go 6-0 right now. And I think if that happens, I, I don't know what else to say. The Roadrunners, they just look almost at a loss here. Like they aren't able to find any bit of momentum against this team. And that's really scary right now, especially if you're any other team looking at Akron and going, we might have to play them very, very soon. Yeah, with their sights set going forward now it seems that akron are eager to go forward in this particular matchup i mean five to zero this is dominant to say the very least utsa you have to wonder what's going through their comms right at this exact moment if they are thinking that they have a chance in this one if they think that their defensive performance is going to be enough to bridge this gap finding one round here is an absolute necessity if UTSA want to have any shot at taking their own map pick here. Because if Akron take this sixth round, there is absolutely no chance UTSA can go on that clean defensive sweep. But if one round, if just one round is obtained for UTSA, the momentum will be stopped in its tracks. And UTSA, if they allow that momentum to guide them through the second half, maybe just maybe the underdog story could be a factor but for now the only story is akron dominance once again no one is surprised when we look at this team of akron no one is ever surprised like you said when they come out guns ablazing, swinging left and right throwing haymakers at any team that they play against but they have to do it for one more round at this half even though they're up 5-0 they still have to finish out at least this site and this half and like we mentioned they are going at this bottom it's going to be a meeting and or not meeting excuse me kitchen and dining and the first step is establishing vertical control and contesting these vertical pressures coming in from both sides whether it's the attack or the defense both of them have to flesh each other out and with two minutes still left to go this attack is looking semi-promising right now but they do have to get rid of this deployable shield if they want to have any advantage of taking care of this top four. Yeah, they've got this pressure mounting already. This is a very different attack we're seeing from UTSA here. They're storming ahead to get control of this top floor very, very quickly. But once again, IMAT is an ever-present problem for UTSA. Goodbye, Rose. Here comes Jetcon on the rotation, but Easy Money and Ton have found their picks in the meantime. Now Ton will be looking for more as the defenders will now be forced to rotate back on this site and recover what was lost in the form of smoke and warden of course jetcon now with that rotation has repositioned a very smart rotation it was pre-prepped and everything they knew that that was something jetcon would potentially be doing in the future i'm at as well rotating back on a site as easy money is hold up here in security and appears to be wary of a possible flank but the flank comes in the form of i matt and his death comes by the hand of the zofia ton finding his fifth frag on the map. Jetcon and Surma are all that remains for this execute. Jetcon finds a shot on the easy money. That's one, but three more hungry attackers remain. This could easily be the round that we see UTSA get back, and maybe we see that momentum finally shift in their favor, or at least a round in their favor, as we see Zyra starting to open up this wall in Kitchen. Jetcon will have to swing out and maybe find another pick, but now they know exactly where it is, thanks to that drone coming in from Ton. Now he shoots the drone, might try to look for another pick, but BZ will find one. Jetcon will have to, I believe, quad clutch this out. 
if he wants his team to get that double flawless sweep. Jakon knows exactly where that plant is coming in from, but he doesn't watch the right angle as Tun will shut him down. And UTSA, they finally tack one on the board. Well, the one round I said they absolutely needed, and they took it, so they will remain in this match for just a bit longer. It's 5-1. to one. We've seen comebacks like this before. It's Oregon after all. It's defensive-sided at its very core, as is the entire game of Rainbow Six Siege. But a 5-1 to one deficit is intimidating, to say the least, especially when a team with the absolute gun skill and sheer audacity of Akron is the one holding that very lead and UTSA have found very little success in conquering that deficit so Defender far this evening. Now with four rounds to make up, four rounds that are gonna be so tough to find, but on defense, you're bringing out the Echo, you're bringing out easy money on that Jaeger roll and the wub wubs that ton is bringing will all be in play these players are going to need to gun and they are going to need to roam free on this map and find some pretty big picks if they don't Akron will storm ahead but the momentum now has stopped for the most part for Akron UTSA here we got to see some clinical defensive performances, some absolutely flawless defensive performances, but they are absolutely in this fight. They could absolutely bring this back. We can't count them out just yet, of course, because they do have one round. It's not flawless just yet for Akron, and this team is just as dangerous as Akron, especially if they start getting hot. The only player that we need to watch get hot, of course, is going to be Ton, who net himself, I believe, a triple in that last round of the previous half so if he starts getting hot i would be very scared of this utsa defense because ton just has to pick the angles he wants to and force akron into their fatal funnels now at two and a half minutes still left to play this utsa team is looking to get very aggressive here jay-z this could be very dangerous for them this could be quite dangerous i like what you said there vial but without much in the way of progress for Akron. We're now going to finally see Surma going for that breach on the attic side, and we're now going to see Jetcon get cut down by Ton. A big frag and Ton remaining on the board after that 1v1 exchange is also going to be a big factor. Easy money lurking over here in Armory, getting a couple of shots onto the players on that master balcony, and Rose will join this fight on the probable breach that is soon to be opened up. But Surma gonna rain a Nane on through the attic. It's gonna land right at the feet of Zyra and take him down, but not out. Now here comes the swing from Surma. One kill netted, two kills. Tun wanted the res so badly that it didn't even focus on the pit push from Surma. The M4 finds its target and now UTSA are on the back foot once again. Less than 90 seconds to go on this push, but the progress has been made. IMAT and Surma are all the way up in attic. However, for UTSA, their saving grace could be easy money. Lurking in armory to stall out any trophy-sided push. However, they do know he's there thanks to a few drones. And most likely Jetcon watching those drones for the flanks. And now the another nade will ring out. Dale only a little bit of damage to Beezy, so maybe he does get very lucky here with the shotgun. More smoke canisters are still on the table. Our just nets are Surma for some reason. Not sure exactly why. Maybe trying to spray onto easy money. And there we go. And still the man advantage leading us into 40 seconds left to go here. This attack is still looking very strong. And with IMAT picking up another and almost a second, yes, the second one will be found. Akron on attack in round seven, find their footing again and find the momentum back in their favor. It will be a match point now for UTSA and the pseudo impossible five round comeback is now what UTSA are presented with. You have to wonder is the mental game completely shot for UTSA, or do they have something in them to crawl this back? I really hope they do have something here to crawl on that, because if there's one team that I was really betting on to take down a team 
like Akron was going to be UTSA. They were looking extremely hot throughout the past few weeks here, especially with the likes of Ton on their team. They're one of their star players. But now it looks like that mental game, like we talked about, is extremely shot. You have the chance. You have five chances, actually, I take that back, for Akron to pull this match point into their existence. And now we head, I believe, back to that top floor site. Jay-Z, what of this defense adjustment has to come in for UTSA? Well, honestly, I like their approach in that last round. It just so happened that the micro positioning and the gun fights just did not go in UTSA's favor. They had pretty good map control. They had a man advantage going into those closing moments, but then Surma and IMAT were unleashed and they stormed in, took control, and won the round for Akron. I mean, how much can you do? I mean, sitting here, if you're even from the perspective of any one of Akron's opponents, what can you counter strat if everything you put at them is gonna end up in a 1v1 gunfight that Akron win? I guess maybe try to force 2v1 gunfights, try to bring Mira, force Mira through the ban phase or something because it just seems impossible to stop Akron and to stop the absolute dominance that they showcase week in and week out. And so now, round number eight with the progress slowly beginning and the methodical clear underway for Akron UTSA. Opting to go to the same site, opting to struggle with the very same issues. What are they going to solve here? And how are they going to solve it? And will it be enough? Arv is going to try to make that impossible. Obviously has it set on his mind to open up this closet breach. Easy money, though, will be supporting from this armory side. Arv will not be able to run in unless easy money is pressured from below or pressured from this armory window, which is exactly what Akron are doing. Despite this being employed in the last round and Akron not having an active solution for it, it still was not the saving grace for UTSA. Easy Money now being forced out. Arv now has the ability to rotate on in. And now he's actually going to go for the aggressive play. It will work. Hennessy is gone from this playing field, dropping down the sledge, who was on his drone. Arv, knowing where the Jaeger is positioned, will now rush on into this master bedroom and open this closet wall but a mute jammer will delay it and easy money will capitalize on that brilliant use of utility Surma trying to save the round but it's going to get immediately shut down by zyra i'm at hoping to claw it back by finding one one kill has been found but four more are needed in a 2v4 i'm at will find a second here so maybe this starts looking extremely doable here for akron it's a 2v3 not completely out of the round just yet because these do have i'm at and jetcon two operators and two players that do have the ability to pull this back however they don't have any hard breaches so they will have to force their way through fatal funnels as we like to talk about they have to locate each of these players and make sure that they know what they're getting themselves into they're probably going to only spot the two on this site the question is where is that last player and do they take these immediate gunfights it's going to be bz at the top of the white stairs c4 rings out and that's a ton of damage to imat but he's still alive and we know that this man can point and click very very well going to pre-fire through the wall but not net himself anything 20 seconds still left to rain down in this site jetcon gets shut down here and imat now left in a 1v3 clutch snare with 13 seconds still left to go he finds the first one on for the ace clutch if he can pull this one out he knows where one of them is but rose will shut him down utsa claw their way back for one more round well they will find their second round in oregon and they will now have their eyes set on four more but it does it is as tough as it sounds four rounds against akron but utsa in that last round they solved their kids and dorm problem it was really hard to tell the exact change that they made but simply the micro positioning was a little bit better gearing up for those gunfights but you have to remember jetcon now excuse me not jetcon it was the jaeger on utsa's side i believe easy money who dropped down into armory or rotated down armory stairs and found two hugely impactful frags onto one the sledge and two the thermite that rotation those frags that aggressive play helped utsa win that round and really was the saving grace for them and i don't think 
this is a surprise. Despite UTSA clearly wanting to win this matchup by counter stratting, strat book, and gun skill alone, it is not enough. You have to be unexpected. You have to throw the gamut at Akron, something that we talked about earlier and something that I think has been proven perfectly by the way that UTSA have found success. Where they have found success has directly correlated with how aggressive they've played in certain moments if those early impact frags do go in UTSA's favor. I hate to say it because usually you like to call for disciplined siege, for, for mature style of play, but the mature play for UTSA now would be to realize what they need to do. That would be go absolutely nuts one of your players have them be an absolute monkey swing lord swing everything take down just one or two of these entry pushes from akron and maybe that will be what you need to win this one out or at least get a couple of rounds here and now they'll have to take it round by round of course because one round if they lose it is the downfall that's the end of their playoff dreams and the playoff for them in general nade will ring out from hennessy trying to nade somebody but no easy money has that abs to back him up and now they know exactly where these players are going to most likely push from as hennessy is trying to hold on to this angle from freezer but it is looking very dangerous here because you have to establish a lot of control but UTSA is not giving up a lick of it. Yeah, the control is firmly in their grasp, but Hennessy is going to make it even harder for this defense to survive. There's another pick on the board. Your echo, your plant denial is gone. Of course, you've got one more C4 after Easy Money just expended the first one, but it's going to get even harder to stall out this closing push as we cross that minute and a half mark, Hennessy finding another kill onto Ton, a huge impact player removed from this fight as Hennessy starts to make his presence felt even more. I'm at another one. It's a 2v5. Easy Money and Rose are going to have to clutch this one up, but the nade and the shots from Arv send it on over. Rose finds one, but the trade with IMAT gives Akron another clean win, and it will be Oregon. It will be the series. It will be the round of eight easily in Akron's hands and they will move ahead to next week firmly with the confidence with the momentum and with everything on their side this team is proving once again why they're champs proving once again why they are a force to be reckoned with why they are really as we can consider them one of if not the best team here in collegiate r6 and it makes a lot of sense you just saw them take down a very very good squad and a very hot squad in utsa but we have to give all the credit to Akron because they just put on a dominant performance. Hats off to them. And 7-2 back-to-back maps. That's pretty good for this team, I, I do have to say. It absolutely is. And I got to say, I think this is worth mentioning. The fact that while dual-wielding PCs, a large majority of this Ak Akron roster, excuse me, in addition to Smack and Flonson, just took on the powerhouse of Ariel Arise, the CCS champions in another league right now. They just beat them down and took a win. It's a huge win for the collegiate community, a huge win for Akron, and something that the entire Siege community is going to be paying attention to. That's why I felt it was worth noting on this CR6 broadcast. But our next match is going to come up at 8 p.m. Eastern. And it will be Georgia versus CU Boulder. A very important match up for both of these teams. A rematch of a face it playoff match just a few weeks ago. But we're not going to have an interview here. That's going to wrap it up for our first series of the night. But stick around. We'll be back in an hour for some more epic CR6 playoff action. See you in a bit. <laughs>
Thank you.